It's been 11 years since the shocking murder-suicide involving Jovan Belcher at the time. He was an active player for the Kansas City Chiefs. The official narrative attributes the tragedy to CTE, diagnosed posthumously a year after he passed in 2013. Yet, living just seven doors away, I sensed an untold story beyond the physical evidence. Nowadays, stories of ex-football players committing unbelievable actions have become routine. The tragic tales of Sergio Brown, Aaron Hernandez and Philip Adams are just a few that come to mind. And recently Sergio Brown. These football players were all involved in committing the most heinous acts. How did they turn into such monsters? Are these all cases of CTEs? Or is it more to this story? On that fateful morning of December 2nd, 2012, just a few houses away sitting at my kitchen table, I heard multiple gunshots ring out. The sirens and police cars began making their way. Then social media lit up. It was all over the news. I intuitively knew there was a completely different narrative being overlooked. Another explanation for all these violent events, my personal story may challenge your beliefs. In 2023, our entire planet is tilting towards a planetary upgrade and spiritual awakening. Many hidden truths are being uncovered, as something is shifting faster than I've ever experienced in my 50 years. Although I believe in one divine creator, I've distanced myself from organized religions more recently for a specific reason. I started to question what I thought I'd always known to be true, so I journeyed down a rabbit hole to understand all spiritual practices, the duality of good versus evil, the truth, the hidden truth, and my preferred outcome, the absolute truth. This horrific event hasn't fully been uncovered and it deserves to be heard. Many ancient texts spoke of a time of spiritual warfare, pointing towards our current day, the age of Aquarius. To comprehend my dual perspective, it's crucial you understand my background. As a 50-50 blend of both Polynesian and Irish, a Gemini woman born on the second, it's no coincidence I've struggled with how to balance my existence, what duality really means, and my gifts beyond the five senses. My genealogy includes Rapa Nui, amongst the standard Austronesian ancestry. For most of my life, I've had psychic awareness in my dream state, since I was a child, every home I lived in seemed to be somewhat haunted, or so I thought. It was always a ghost or some type of spirit trying to gain my attention. My first childhood experience was the Hat Man, which many people around the world have claimed to see. So in 2004, when my husband and I had an opportunity to build a new home, I thought my troubles would finally end. A brand new house, ground up, no one has ever lived in. Boy, was I wrong. Strange recurrences in my home started happening early after moving in, and then amping up coincidentally around the time of the murder-suicide, tragically taking the lives of two young souls far too soon. Immediately after settling in, my family started experiencing unusual things, starting with noises in the basement, then it seemed to escalate to moving objects as the years progressed. My husband and I were constantly fighting. On top of that, we both seemed to be angry, on edge, and I recall not sleeping well at all. It started to take a toll on our relationship. One day I received a call at work. My kids were already home from school, barely making out what they were saying on the phone. All I could hear was fear in their voices. I told them I was on my way. Just go across the street to the neighbor's house. I hung up, wondering what would cause them to be so terrified. As I pulled into the driveway and saw them all standing outside. By the looks on their faces, I could see something wasn't right. Four clamoring children in complete fear, still afraid they followed me in. I took a few steps toward the dining room and couldn't believe my eyes. All the pictures were off the wall and my dining room chairs upside down flipped over away from the table. Confused initially, I'll admit, I wondered if one of them did it, but soon it would happen again, right in front of me, leaving no doubt something was seriously wrong in my new home. As time went on, I'm not sure how I dealt with it, by that time, I was drinking heavily, and everything seemed like a fog looking back. Then I started having unexplained pain, which turned into a serious neurological disease. I went to numerous doctors, but nothing was working, and my symptoms were progressing. Eventually, I was admitted to one of the best hospitals in the world, the Mayo Clinic. But the problem would remain, and a cure wasn't to be had. This is where the story makes a dramatic turn. I returned back to Kansas City. One night... While my eldest son was away with a friend, my kids and I decided to hang out in his room 
have a family night together, watch a movie on his new TV. Miles' room was downstairs on a sub-basement level. Before we fell asleep, I took some pictures of us hanging out, which later revealed a shocking discovery. That night, I had the worst nightmare ever. An elderly, crip-looking woman got on top of me in the bed and started choking me. It felt so real. She wore an all-black dress with a cameo and doily collar. Her silvery white hair was pinned up on top of her head, looking like a creepy hag from the Civil War era. I woke up frantically coughing and screaming. The next day, I realized my son Aaron was gone from the room. Because of the horrid dream, I was eager to know what happened. At breakfast, I could see the concerned look on his face. He blurted out, Mom, I had a dream of an old lady. A scary lady was attacking me. Suddenly, remembering the pictures we had taken the night before, I pulled out my phone, and sure enough, it was some bizarre object, like a mist partially covering her face. Being recently diagnosed with Lyme's disease and experiencing symptoms of Parkinson's, I was unwilling to allow this problem to force us out of our home. Early spring of 2012, I began seeing new neighbors, Jovan and Cassandra occasionally walking hand in hand. I'm pretty sure the whole cul-de-sac noticed the power couple, especially his flashy new Bentley. Looking to start their new life together, 25-year-old Jovan just signed a one-year contract with the Chiefs, including an average annual salary of $1.9 million, more than he had ever seen in his life. Their home was also brand new construction. During that time, it seemed like there was an overload of empty new houses in my subdivision. As I recall, their home never went up for sale. It immediately became a rental once the build was completed. They were the first to ever live there. I didn't know them personally. We would just cordially wave to each other passing by. A few years before this all took place, I planted a gorgeous white Bradford pear tree in my front yard to bless the property. Subconsciously, I was thinking since the land was barren, I'd worked for the city's parks department, so I understood the benefits of tree planting. That year, my tree was hit by lighting. A huge part of it was lost. And then another lighting strike a second time shortly after, the same tree and location, clearing the fallen limbs. I suddenly remembered the prayer I said while planting the tree. I asked God to accept this tree as an offering to the land. Since there was nothing previous there, or so I thought, then it dawned on me. I had performed what my ancestors called an offering. I realized this lighting meant something deeper than what it appeared to be, perhaps a sign that my offering wasn't accepted. I wonder about some of the spiritual influences that might have taken hold of Jovan with a head injury and his routine drunken state. He was said to be drinking more than ever. A hundred years ago, everyone knew to bless property because of these things, and that alcohol was called spirits for a reason. It leaves people vulnerable to spiritual attack. This may seem far-fetched, but my story doesn't end here. I decided to do some digging around and find out what was on this land before my house was built. During the spring of 2012, extremely suicidal myself, it was time to find answers to this madness. Another mysterious event happened on the exact date, one year later on December 2nd, 2013, at the Chief Stadium where Jovan ended his life. A man who was heavily drinking, a first-time father with a newborn child around the same age, just like Jovan, accidentally got into the wrong car during his intoxicated stupor. Completely by accident, he fell asleep. He was mobbed by a senseless group of drunk people and then received multiple fatal blows by one individual who ended his life on the same property where Jovan ended his life, in the chief's parking lot. Because of the date and the person dying in the same manner, with the exact same circumstances, the victim a new father, early 20s, newborn baby, my ancestors say this is a memory playing out, or possibly the act of spirit possession, not Jovan's spirit, but the earthbound entity that possessed him, stranding him at the stadium. That's how they work. I discovered this plot of land was originally a part of Raytown, Missouri. It was rezoned sometime in the past 50 years, gifting it over to Kansas City. My sudden illness, depression, and haunted experiences. Then the lightning point towards something violent occurring on this land. Perhaps many people of the older days knew about it, which is why nobody wanted it until 2001, when a two-man developer team bought it and started building houses. Incidentally, one of the builders, shortly into the second phase of building, came down with cancer and died. We're still at the beginning of the story, though. Just a few years later, one of my other neighbours, a healthy cop barely into his 40s, 
lived just a few houses east of Javan, also a brand new homeowner, came down with cancer. It was said to be one of the rarest types in the world. Because of his job, he answered the call responding to the crime scene at Jovan's home. The plot of land in question bordered the historical Santa Fe Trail, marked 1865 to this day. The people I kept seeing in the dream world, also known as the Astral, they seemed stuck in time. We know factually that Native Americans called this area their home, but because of the American Indian Act, between 1830 to 1850, shortly before the Santa Fe Trail brought in new developers, Many people were ethnically cleansed by murder or forcefully displaced. Incidentally, Jackson County, Missouri, where the land in question is located, was changed to Jackson County on August 31, 1819, named for Andrew Jackson, a general popular for his role in the War of 1812. It was the first area to be named after Andrew Jackson. And guess who ordered the Trail of Tears once in office and land cleansing? You guess it, Andrew Jackson. Something important that should be noted, this land was deemed unfit during the first surveyor's inspection, sometime after the land cleansing occurred. Matter of fact, according to the Raytown Historical Society and Wikipedia, a large section of the county, Township 49, was accidentally not offered for sale when the other townships were, and so it was called the, the Lost Township. People moved into this town and squatted until the township was surveyed, and the land sold in 1843 sound like a huge cover-up. In many cultures, land can easily become riddled with darker forces, especially if desecrated. This creates akka cords that tie adverse negative energy to the land. Usually, people haunt areas for several reasons. They become attached to their property. Some say a curse can remain for decades. For example, if we are not willing to forgive someone in my culture, we create a cord that keeps us tethered together. Until we offer forgiveness and release our judgment of their actions, it can cause great harm. This is why ghosts are ghosts. They get trapped because of their own free will and our inability to let them go. The angels cannot just force anyone towards light of creation. My teacher Kahuna and healer Morna Simeona says spirits can remain in between for extremely long periods. The Hawaiians have a cleansing prayer that's designed to usher those stuck over to the light. My ancestors always performed Ho'oponopono first, no matter the problem, as the Hawaiians believed all illnesses and bad occurrences were a result of an imbalance we or our family may have caused, unleashing dark energies on the land or within us. Each year, hundreds of rocks and sand are mailed back to Hawaii by people who are told not to remove a single pebble when they visit the islands. These are forces known to cause great harm that no doctor can cure. Most people are taught when you cross over, you go straight to heaven. This is not entirely true. Because our planet abides by the law of free will, you don't automatically go to higher realms. If you become attached to your wealth, greed, and personal possessions, you can end up attracting possession to you or stuck in the same house you live in today. The Trail of Tears cuts deep in many parts of Missouri and close neighbor Kansas. This small town of Raytown, Missouri has experienced so many weird and bizarre killings. It's shocking no one talks about it. Lastly, I will provide you with what the historical records revealed. This shall provide the final piece of the puzzle, and this makes a lot of sense. Finally, I left the area, losing the house and everything I owned. The tree was struck by lightning again, a third time, and then a fourth time. The tree was no more. I was guided to learn the authentic Hawaiian cleansing practice, called Hoponopono. I performed one for the land, Cassandra and Jovan. Thankfully, I've completely recovered from the disease. By working with this practice and granting forgiveness, we can allow what is rightfully so, allowing the law of nature to take place. In 2019, I discovered a rich farmer bought up 50 plus acres of land near my cul-de-sacs area. Sometime in the late 1800s, he was said to own upward of over 200 slaves. The night before the murder, Jovan's close friend had a dream of his buddy on a hog farm. He knew his friend loved bacon and he attempted to text him about the dream only to find out about the tragic event. His friend was seeing into the astral realm, the truth of the memories of the land. My gut tells me that a young slave similar in age, perhaps with a newborn child or one on the way, experienced the same fate. When people leave before they're ready, it can cause disembodied spirits to remain stuck. What disturbed me was after learning of the hog farm, I knew the dreams were pointing to something sinister. 
My ancestors say there are no coincidences, and if you are curious about football in general, why this sport has so many normal players turning evil, it was a study done by the Global Consciousness Project, headed by Roger Nelson at Princeton University. Football games at any level, regardless if it's a Super Bowl or regular season, offer zero benefit in any way towards collective consciousness. This has been studied since 1997. What does that mean when you're praying for a field goal, there is no sign of positive divine energy there, or what one would call godly presence? A player can become a target of possession if he's overly attached to his possessions. Know that death is not permanent. We all return until we get this human experience called life right. Please cut ties by offering forgiveness. Let go of ties with your earthly attachments and they will release you. Thank you for watching. Peace be with you. Grab a free guide of the authentic Ho'oponopono cleansing prayer at rainbowflow.com. If you need to cleanse a home, a piece of land, or are experiencing problems with unknown causes, Hawaiian blessings have been coveted for hundreds of years, if not longer. When respected and worked with properly, it allows divine nature to do what's right by creation.